Good evening, campers. It's me, Kieran, and today we are going to talk about the first ever Maori novel. That is Tangi by Witi Ihimeira. First published in 1973 and would later go on to ring the Wati Book of the Year Award. This is somewhat of a seminal text, a classic of Maori literature. And being a seminal text, let's preface this by saying it doesn't really matter what I think about this book because Tangi does a lot more than just tell a story. By being the first Maori novel, it allows other Maori novels to be published. Without Ihimeira doing this, who knows, we might not have had works by Alan Duff, Paula Morris, or the Man Booker winner, Kerry Hume. This book stands for something greater, despite if you enjoy the book or not. How I came across this book is through another book reviewer, Renee from So I Read This Book. I will link her channel down below and we'll put links where she talks about Tangy. I messaged her on Instagram and asked her, what Maori writers are there? Let me know. Let's talk about it. It's, it's a culture that I don't know much about and I'm curious to learn. Renee was an aide in helping me understand the symbols, the cultural references that Ihimeira is drawing upon. And being a first Maori writer, he's going to talk about Maori things that if you don't know anything are going to go over your head. Luckily for Tangi, we're going to deal with the same things a lot in a very repetitious manner. Don't start with the negatives. What is Tangy. What is that word? Well, it's short form for tangy hanger, which is the funeral rites that a Maori person goes through when they die. Our protagonist Tama has to orchestrate the tangy hanger for his father Rongo. And we're going to see Tama deal with grief. We're going to see him deal with losing a parent. That sense of mourning that is intense, that is incessant and infinite. Tabba's never able to truly grasp his grief. He's never able to let go of that bereavement. And Ihimeiro will talk about the rights of the tangy. Now, it's very different to, say, Western funerals, where... The funerals done over a day of the funerals and the cremations that I've been to, they're about an hour maximum. Like that part of the funeral doesn't actually take long. Maybe the reception or the wake will take the majority of the day where people reflect, where people talk, where people reminisce and talk about the good days, the good memories. And... Maybe we'll find out a little bit more about our loved ones. On the other hand, a tangy hanger is spread over three days with burial only happening on the third. The Tupapaku, which is the body of the deceased, is really left alone. And being now the head of the family, Tama, his job is to be with the body, to be in constant reflection. However, what is also different is that we have a communal place of grieving which is the mare. And with each person, with each guest, with each party who enters the mare, the grief begins again. What should be a powerful and cathartic grieving moment doesn't translate over within Tangi. We understand that he is grieving, but he's going to reference the earth and the sky. Tama's mother being the earth, Tama's father being the sky. The parental symbolism that is tied within the sky and the earth hails from Maori mythology regarding the story of Rangi and Papa who are held in a tight embrace and their sons, there were 70 of them, they were probably very busy. Rangi and Papa's sons are forced to live within the dark cramped space between their embrace. And Tabba feels that this tight embrace, this almost claustrophobic nature, is his grief. With his father returning to the spiritual world, Tabba feels as though he's been encased in 
all the more. And we will be told that for for over 150 pages. Ihimeira talks about the point to a degree that some of the passages just feel reworded, but the end of this book sticks the landing. All the emotions that I wanted, all the exploration of grief and bereavement that this book set out to do within the very beginning happens right at the end. And it's touching and it's heartwarming. But is it worth this continual, repetitive, almost regurgitated? Meh? Is it worth it? It's not. So with Taggy, I would overall give it a three. If you want to learn about more Maori writers, Renee is the channel to go to. Again, links down below. Please do check it out. Please tell her that I sent you and I will see you again for another one. Bye!